This video is sponsored by BarkBox. I love how BarkBox comes up with these new original themes every month. This one might be my favorite one yet. It's a Grinch box. Not only does BarkBox make a great gift for your dog, but they also make a great gift for any dog lover. BarkBox will send you a super cool curated box with things that your dog is going to love every month. Oh, neat. That's a Grinch right there. And that's the power of a new toy sometimes. If you can just really captivate them with something new every month that can really get you past various training plateaus. It's like a different squirrel every month. How do they think of this? Go figure. A terrier likes a squirrel. Ready? Go get it. They actually have really high quality treats. I like that real meat is the first ingredient in these. Who doesn't love Grinch themed dog treats? You get a different chew for your dog every month too. You just choose your dog's size, choose if you want a six or 12 month subscription, and you get your bark boxes automatically delivered each and every month. And get a bark box for a friend. It's the ultimate gift for dog lovers. BarkBox is gonna give all of you a free bark box when you sign up for a six or 12 month subscription. Just go to barkbox.com slash dog training. I'm going to have that link in the description below. Click thumbs up for Argyle, the four-month-old West Highland Terrier. Make sure you're subscribed to my channel. Hey, upload a photo to Instagram. Tag at Zach George with hashtag dog training, and I'm going to share some of my favorites. The last time I saw Argyle, his basic leave it, you know, in a setup training session was looking really good, but he still had a little bit of work to do. But Argyle's mom said that when he's on a walk, he sometimes gets into things that he shouldn't and tries to pick up debris off the ground. You know, stuff that puppies do. That means it's time to take Argyle's basic leave it to the next level. In fairness, the stuff we're going to do today is a little bit advanced for such a young puppy, but I think we can still make progress. Before we just go out in public for today's lesson, I need to verify a few things. I need to verify that he's doing well with leave it in this easy indoor environment. Let me just see if by default he goes for it. He does. That would be expected. I didn't ask him to leave it. This time, I'm going to ask him to leave it. If he goes for it, I'll simply pull it away, leave it. Nice job, good work. And for good measure, let me just make sure I can have him leave it and also look at me when I ask. Look at me. Nice, good work. So I'm gonna make it a little bit more difficult. By dropping the treat, that really makes this exercise tougher. So you can see there with that temptation of it moving, he was a lot more likely to get it. So let me see if we can just quickly work up to getting him to leave it alone while I drop it. I'm gonna be really close to communicate with him, leave it alone. Yes, good job, good. Move it around multiple times. You can see he's tempted. Let me see if I can get his eyes on me. Okay, look at me. Yes, I'll take it. I love that glance, that was great. Remember, it's easier for dogs to listen to us when we're close to them. Let's see how he does when I stand completely up now. Because on a walk, you're not on the ground like this. You're standing up, right? Leave it alone. You can see right there how he went for the treat. And simply standing up, is a major variable change to him. He's not used to taking direction while I stand up, so that threw him off a little bit. Just take just a moment sometimes and go the extra mile and just work with them a little bit longer than you might otherwise before you get frustrated. They'll probably come around. Leave it alone. Look at me. All right, Argyle seems really warmed up now. Let's see if we can make some progress where it really counts in the real world. Training out here is drastically different than training in an indoor environment. I mean, the smells are a thousand times more enticing. He can hear sounds from far away. And oh, let's not forget, he's never been here before. The protocol in these situations is definitely don't just go right into training. Give your dog some time to adjust. I mean, he really just wants to explore this area. Dogs by nature are typically very, very curious. And when they're in a new place, they're anxious to explore that place. He's so young, so he hasn't had the life experience before of checking out a place like this. Things like bugs or butterflies or birds or wind even can be really interesting to dogs. I wanna know where I stand right now in terms of him being readily willing to pay attention to me. I'm gonna let him know I have a treat. And look at that, he took it. A lot of you will know that it's really common for a dog not to take a treat when they're really, really distracted. So this is a good sign that he's in a teachable mindset. And if your dog won't take a treat in a public place like this, then you probably need to do some more training or give them some additional time to adjust. So let's ask him to do something. Sit. See, you see, he, before he was sitting perfectly, no problem. But this is a different variable. We're in a new place. Yes. Good job. I'm gonna give him a little bit of an extra reward because I know that was harder for him. 
So we did get him into a sit. Great sign, I think we're ready to move on with our lesson. Now we're gonna do some leave it training out here. Remember, huge variable change to get him warmed up, and then we'll make it a little bit more challenging, assuming it goes well. To the layman, it might appear that we're being very redundant with our training, and that's by design, because we're changing major variables on Argyle right now. That's why we're going very slow with every variable change and checking to make sure everything is still working with those variable changes. Leave it. You, you see that? You see how he immediately goes for it? He wasn't doing that so much inside. Leave it alone. But now he thought about it. Yes. And he's like, oh yeah, wait, I think I know this one. That was really good. Okay, so he did leave it really well there. Let me make sure I can drop a treat. Ready? Leave it. I'm gonna do it a couple of times. And look at me. Perfect. If your dog isn't doing this well, do not be discouraged. This is something that you need to do over, look at me many training sessions. He started to sniff something right there, so I thought I'd try to get his attention on me because it looked like he was tempted to break. See how close I can get it. Leave it alone. Look at me. Yes, good work. Now let me stand up. Leave it. Leave it alone. Just dropping tiny treats. Let's drop a bigger one, make it more tempting. Leave it. And leave it. Look at me. Nice work. You might notice too, I'm doing two and three in a row right now because he's demonstrating that he's very reliable, again, in this specific training instance. But it's normal for dogs to have a bad day where they're not feeling quite as cooperative. And in those cases, you need to adjust your rewards. So sometimes you might wanna go ahead and reward your dog more generously if they're really struggling. Do your best to keep them motivated within the context of that specific training session. Dogs and puppies in particular are curious and brand new to the world. So we really need to be tolerant when teaching outside. At first, compliance is likely to be intermittent, especially with young dogs. So we're just looking for those little hints of acknowledgement in early training, especially with a more advanced skill, like walking nicely on a leash in public and leaving tempting objects alone. While he's really good when you're on him and really focused on him, it's when you're taking a walk and he's surprised by something that we have issues with getting his attention. I really want to drive this point home. Just because your dog will leave a treat alone while you're standing in a stationary position does not mean that they're going to then generalize that skill to leaving things alone while you're, say, walking on a leash. The real secret to teaching this is showing them how to leave those objects alone outside of those organic instances that naturally arise when you're on your day-to-day -day walk so they have some experience in knowing what you expect of them. So we know that he walks on a leash pretty acceptably, at least for his age, and we know he'll leave it. So now we're going to try to combine leave it and leash walking. Hey Argyle, leave it. And you can see immediately, I let him get that one because you can see leaving it while walking, that's completely different. So he ate the treat on that one. That's my cue to not just keep repeating that over and over until I get lucky. This time I'm going to assume that he's likely to do it. Leave it. I'm going to cover it up if he goes for it this time. Good boy, come on. I'm gonna go ahead and reward for the restraint. I'm gonna slow down a little bit here. Ready, leave it. Good, I was gonna cover it up this way. And he, this is where a lot of dogs struggle. He's like, why would I walk past that treat? That's really hard for him. Come on, yes, good job. Argyle, come here, leave it. Let's go, leave it. And I'm, you notice how I'm not pulling on him at all. I really want him to think, that's important. Instinctively, you probably want to pull your dog away, but that is ineffective for long-term teaching. So you can really see his wheels turning here. So he's like, wow, leave it applies when I'm walking too. And that was the first time that I'm aware of anyway, that he left something alone while in motion. What we're gonna do now is what I like to call a surprise primary training session. That's where you as the person know that a training session is about to be underway, but your dog doesn't. See, when we do normal training sessions, they are very clued in to the ritual that we go through, we cut up the treats, we sit down with them, we warm them up with sit and look at me and all of that. I'm gonna do none of that for this as if to simulate a real world situation. But if while on a walk, what if you encounter some delicious garbage or a real bone? So to prepare for this training session, I'm gonna set down this and this can of 
open chili. I have no expectations that Argyle is just gonna leave those things alone when we walk past him. The point of this exercise is to show him methodically and really in slow motion how we expect him to behave when encountering foreign objects. And because I know this is gonna be extra tough, I'm gonna up the value of my currency. I'll be using real meats. Just so he knows I've got a good treat, let me go ahead and give him some turkey there. Good, so that should give me some good ammunition when encountering these distractions. Oh, no, leave it alone. Argyle, leave it. See, he's not leaving that alone. That's a brand new tempting object. Leave it? We know he knows leave it. Look at me. You see how that's not realistic? That's why you have to take a step back here. I need to get him sitting and leaving it alone from farther away. So I'm gonna use my very good currency, which is turkey now. We're gonna go back here. I'm gonna say sit. Good, nice job. And again, you shouldn't be going on walks without your currency if your dog is new to training or you're in that first year of training. Ah, leave it. Back here. Sit, leave it alone. And my goal here is to be able to walk past this bone with, with a loose leash without him pulling towards that object. That's what I'm working towards here. The first few times you try this, it may take five, 10, 15, 20 minutes or longer. So that's normal. When you are training your dog and you're doing a training walk and you do encounter something like this, don't just try and rush past it. Really try to seize those opportunities to use it as a training instance. Let's go Argyle. And look at him, looking at the bone, looking at me, trying to decide, what do I want to do? I really want to go after that bone. Come on, yes! Good job, very good. And we're gonna give him a mini jackpot reward there. Lots of tiny, tiny pieces of turkey in a sequential fashion to let him know you made the right choice there. I really wanna seal those behaviors in when, when he does make the right decision by giving him a really good outcome to that decision. I'm rewarding virtually every time right now because I've dramatically increased the difficulty of this exercise. Now it's time for the chili can. See what happens when we walk past the chili. You can see he's immediately into it. I don't want him licking that. That is warm chili. Although warm chili sounds kind of good right now. Now I'm one step ahead of him. Leave it. Uh, sit. Yes, so really good. Look how close I am to the chili can and look at the fact that he sat right there. That means he's in a teachable mindset. I'm just gonna sit down, I'm gonna park here. Leave it, come here. Good, sit, good. And this is what I mean, embrace distractions. If you wait till you're on a normal walk and you're relying on leave it, leave it, leave it and pulling your dog away and hoping that's gonna work, forget it. And so while this may seem really tedious, it is but you only do this in the beginning part of your training, you know, so you don't have to do it for the next 10, 15 years of your dog's life. Look at me, fantastic. I haven't been able to do, leave it with a chili can while moving. That's the hard part for Argyle. Understandably so, by the way. Leave it, come here, come on. Yes, right there, there's our magic moment. We got it, gonna jackpot him. While we have momentum, I'm gonna try and get another success in. Come on, this way. Yes, walking away from that chili over here. Good work, leave it alone. Yes, and you're seeing the very, very beginning stages of Argyle generalizing, leave it alone in the real world or what I like to call a real life leave it. This is an example of a surprise primary training session and you should be doing these in a variety of different ways and contexts as we frequently cover on this YouTube channel. Each instance of success that you get is increasing the likelihood that your dog is gonna do this better and better when naturally tempted by things that he encounters when on a walk. You may encounter a little worm up here. Don't leave that worm alone or caterpillar or whatever that is. I mean, that is interesting even if you're a person much less a dog. Can you do it? Stay. Look at me. Good. You can see he wants to look at it and that's okay, he can look at it, but I don't want him picking it up. That's what I call a real life leave it. If any dog deserves a thumbs up, I'd say it's Argyle, wouldn't you? Make sure you're subscribed to my channel and get your free BarkBox when you sign up for a six or 12 month plan. Go to BarkBox.com slash dog training. That link will be below. Upload a picture of your dog to Instagram, tag at Zach George and use hashtag dog training. I'm gonna share some of my favorites and join the dog training revolution on Patreon too. All the links will be in the description below. Argyle, you're awesome, buddy.